HTPN highlights. Do you want me just to go through some of that early history stuff? Yeah, that's kind of interesting. I mean, like you didn't have a computer back then, so it's already interesting how you exactly, exactly. You know, like you know, you had to sync up different drum machines, I guess, and uh, exactly. Well, well, when we first started, we were all uh, the three of us that start in, in those days. You weren't a DJ because a DJ was just someone who played records and right. that, you know, on the radio really. So DJs didn't really exist. So our, our idea, we'd we'd all come through punk and post-punk. So yeah. I was at college with some friends and a couple of us started to bring in some um, slime stuff. And this is things like perhaps really early Frob and Gristle, um, some of the German sort of Faust album, stuff like this. And we were like, a little group of us be began to become interested in that more sort of electronic side of music. But, you know, that was early days. And there was an English band called Mersbo um, that released some stuff, very, very strange. But this little group of us really liked it. So um, we decided that we, we would be, you know, we would sort of try and get into electronics ourselves. And mm. at that time in England, there was one shop. It was called Chase Musicians. It was um, near near Euston Station, right? But they bought in ARPs. So I went to look at it and I had enough money to buy an ARP Axe. <laughs> and that was my very, very first, my first <coughs> synthesizer. Yeah. Um, and that was like a, that was like a poor man's odyssey. Um, I think it was monophonic. Mm -hmm. um, but I got it home and the first thing I did, obviously you had a patch book with all the patches in. And there was this thing called, um, anyway, I set this patch up and I moved all the knobs, right? And when I yeah. pressed the button, when I pressed the button, it went blip, blip, blip. And I looked at it and guess what the patch was called? Leaky faucet. Okay. <laughs> and of course, four, four set is, I think, did the Germans say four set? We say tap. Okay. Yeah. So to the Americans, leaky four set means leaky tap. Yeah. So that's what this thing, fucking thing did. It was like yeah. drip, drip, drip. So <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd paid like three months salary for like a, yeah. a thing that made drip noises. But, yeah, it's so amazing uh, just to think. It's um, not that long ago, but back then you had a whole patch book to where you kind of sort of you know exactly save presets and you know through exactly. pictures you had to recreate them again that's amazing exactly exactly and yeah. they gave you they gave you patches which obviously you set up but if you were if, if that slider was out by a tiny increment because mm. there was no there was no digital readout to tell you you just have to right. do it according to the little markers on the on the slider um anyway so yeah so we've got the arpx um and i think after that um, we, we bought that first programmable drum machine, the Roland Box, um, CR78. Yeah. So we had that. And at that point, we started to make electronic music. Um, but we, um, the, <laughs> it's going to be quite a long, it could be a long history. Is it? But we, um, we got invited to a local, um, to record a track for like a local um, album, if you like. So we had no record deal. We were just like making bleep and blue stream strange electronics. Right. Um, so we got invited to do this album. So we went, and when we turned up, um, we were the only band, like a synthesizer and a, and a box and a vocalist. Um, but we did this sort of slightly strange track, and the guy that recorded it put loads of reverb all over the voice. So afterwards I said to him, it sounds great, but we don't want the reverb on the voice. And yeah. he said, well, it was really out of key and out of tune. It was awful, you know. So we said, that's fine. You know, that's how it's meant to be. It was, re it was quite odd at that point, I suppose. Um, anyway, he said, well, you can re-record it, but you'll have to come to my little studio that's at the end of my garden. He had like a garden shed. So he said, fine, we'll come to you. But this guy had been recording reggae. So when we went to his shed, he had a spring reverb, an actual spring, which is a reverb. He had an eight track, one and a half inch tape and a revox to master down onto. Mm -hmm. And he had a space echo. And the moment we heard that, the mo moment we put a synthesizer for a space echo, Portion Control was born, really. That was, yeah. like, fantastic, fantastic. So we recorded material with him. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, we progressed. And we la I, landed up, I landed up wanting to get the TB303 bass line. And I went to um, – we bought that in London at the Rock Shop in, in Camden Town. And at the same time, they had the Dramatics, which you could pair together, uh, you probably know, and you, it was like a Roland Din that, that connected the two together. Mm -hmm. So for these two boxes, you could make bass and drums. Right. So we bought the two on the spot. 
and that was what we used for ISAG mentally, which is kind of a kind of a little bit of a blueprint um, early sort of UK industrial album, I guess now is one with a green screaming face that was computer pixel related face, ISAG mentally. Um, and we added a Moog Rogue, um, an SH09, and then it was a TB303 with the dramatics. But ju- I'll tell you what, you talk about making music naively. On that dramatics, it had BD, SD, HH, CLH, right. CL, right? And we didn't even know what that, we really didn't quite know what that meant. Because the difference between, to be fair, the difference between the, the fucking the rim and the snare and the and the, even the kick was negligible, you know. Right. <laughs> but, you know, it just made like farts and bleeps. But, you know, yeah. pair, pairing it with a bass line, we started to get some good stuff. And then we landed up with, we landed up doing things like um, recording the drums at double tempo and then slowing the tape down. And mm-hmm. we, we tried our best to try and sort of, then we landed up micing the micing the dramatics up, you know, and recording it with um, distortion on, on on the on the amp and recording it. So, for I segmented over the sort of tricks that we were using, plus early sampling, because um, we had the Green Gate DS3. Mm-hmm. And I looked up the stats on the on the Green Gate, which was a very very first sampling possibility. And what it was was it bold that you fit you fitted into an Apple II computer, um, and then it came with a keyboard. And it had four sample channels, um, and you could get about one and a half seconds in each of those channels. But then you could play it back with MIDI if you had something like Cubase Pro 24. You could actually, and all the cables sort of hung out of this thing. It was a homemade thing, but it's yeah. called the Green Gate. If you look back at the history of sampling, that really was the first available sample. I think it was 800 pounds back then. So that we really, really saved hard for that. But we knew we knew that sampling was something that excited us. Yeah. But I looked up how much memory it was, um, the Green Gate, and um, when I found out, I thought I had to look again because I thought, how can it be such small memory? I think we're talking about four megabytes or something. The whole yeah, machine. Yeah. I mean, if it's know. if it's if it's if it's like a second or what you said per sec uh, per. Yeah, about four seconds maybe four total seconds. across four channels. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I mean. Eight bits. Yeah. Okay. Eight yeah. Bit. Eight, eight bit. Yeah. Eight bit. yeah, yeah. So it, it it was definitely a very small. Uh, very small. Less than a photo on a phone. Miles right. less. You know. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. I mean, what the you know what? Look at where we are now. It's just absolutely yeah. mind boggling. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you did you play around with um, like those techniques? Like like you said before with the tape, also uh, record double speed into the sampler and slow it absolutely. down. Absolutely. Every yeah. single everything we could do, we tried to do every yeah. way we could. We turned. We used to because the thing is, you couldn't. Obviously, now you can do all this stuff with ease, but we'd yeah. turn the tape over, we'd record stuff, and then we'd bounce it to the Revox. And this yes. engineer guy that was um, our first kind of um, first guy that brought our, brought out our material would obviously cut and splice the tape. HTPN highlights.